In this video, we're gonna go through three makeup mistakes that age you faster. These are the mistakes that I see my clients over the age of 50 make all the time. Today, I wanna to specifically talk about products that you may be reaching for that are simply not working for you. If you're struggling with your makeup or you just don't feel like you look your best right now and you don't know why, this could very well be the reason why. But instead of just leaving you with a list of don'ts, which would be incredibly unhelpful, I'm gonna give you product suggestions to get instead that I guarantee will work better for you. Welcome to the first ever episode of this and not that. Let's go. Before I get into mistake number one, I just wanna tell you a little story. At the beginning of my career, when I was working in film and TV doing breakdown makeup for actors, if we wanted to age an actor and make them look older than they were, we did the following things. We added age spots to the skin, we made the skin look drier and rougher with powder, and we added a product that formed wrinkles on the skin. I'll never forget it, it was Ben Nye Wrinkle Stipple. Anyway, I digress. The point is that wrinkles, age spots, redness, and patches of dry, rough skin directly connect our brain to aging. If you want to make someone look really old, you add those things to their face and boom, they look old. In nature, what is it that creates all of those things? I will give you a minute. Think about it. The sun. Makeup mistake number one is not wearing a daily facial sunscreen. The absolute best product to use to prevent skin aging is sunscreen. You hear it all the time. You hear it all the time from me and from like everyone else. <laughs> With that said though, okay, not all sunscreens are the same and not all of them are that great. The trick is really to find one that not only protects you from the UVA, UVB rays, but also has anti-aging properties built into it. What we want is skincare and sunscreen in one product. We wanna marry skincare and sunscreen. When we do that, that's when we get a great, great sun protection product for our face. My favorite facial sunscreen ever is by the brand Supergoop. Supergoop has no idea who I am. This is not sponsored. I paid for it with my own money at Sephora. I have nothing to gain from saying this. I just really, really do love their sunscreens. They have great facial sunscreens and here's why. So the first thing that's great about it is that it has an SPF of 40, which is awesome. And it has really good skincare ingredients in it. If you research what's actually in that sunscreen, the ingredients are really good for your face. Supergoop also has different formulas for their sunscreen and they're all really, really cool and they serve a purpose kind of to satisfy everyone. The glow screen one in particular is my absolute favorite and it has a pearlescent finish which gives you kind of that glow from within look which is gorgeous worn completely on its own or under makeup like a primer and it's extra cool because it comes in four different shades. So that is very, very handy. You're not leaving anyone out. So if you are very dark skinned, it's not like you're gonna get a white cast, which is very annoying. And if you're very fair skinned, you're not gonna turn orange, which is equally as annoying. So I love that they kind of have a little bit of an inclusivity factor in their sunscreens when it comes to the pearlescent finish. That is really very, very cool. If you're not into the glow though, if you're just not into that glow on the skin and you're typically bothered by sunscreen textures, you can also get the unseen version, which leaves a completely invisible finish to the skin, but it still has really great skincare properties to it as well. If you prefer a mineral version, so a non-chemical sunscreen with a sheer satin finish, they also have the sheer sunscreen in that same line. So a mineral sunscreen is good for people who have very sensitive skin. If you don't have sensitive skin and you don't really care if it's mineral or chemical and you don't like the pearlescent finish, but you also don't like an invisible finish, then the sheer one also sits right in the middle. Right, so this is what's really cool. There's a sunscreen for everyone. Now, if you're over the age of 50, I would likely stay away from anything that is mattifying. Sheer, yes. Satin, yes. Glowy, hells, yes. But matte, maybe not, maybe not matte. We lose a lot of radiance as we age, 
and our skin can start looking very flat. So adding something like the Super Goop Matte Screen may flatten and dull the skin out too much. A matte appearance really does become less and less flattering as we get older. Another sunscreen that I advise that you stay away from is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sunscreen. I had high hopes for this one because it's specifically made to brighten and even out uneven skin texture, which is a common issue in age 50 and up. It has such a cute little bottle, which doesn't really matter, but I must admit it's still really nice to have, right? It just is, but I don't know. I don't know you guys, it just isn't that great. It leaves a white cast on darker skin, which I find to be a huge turnoff. It pills a lot. It breaks down makeup. It has a really strong chemical smell. I don't know, as terrible reviews on the Sephora website, and I can definitely see why I agree with those reviews. It is nowhere near my list of recommended sunscreens that do all the awesome things. Something else that I do not recommend that you do is use your large bottle of body sunscreen on your face every day. The main reason for this is because your face is generally more sensitive than your body. Facial sunscreen and body sunscreen formulations are actually quite different. Sunscreens that are made for your face typically don't contain any oils. So they really do prevent you from breaking out, you know, if you're, if you're prone to that. And then the sunscreens that are made for your body almost always have oils in them because they're just very easily spreadable with the oil. Facial sunscreens also typically have those extra ingredients in them, like I mentioned before, that are made to target anti-aging or facial skincare issues. And body sunscreen just isn't, right? So although both of these products are sunscreen, they are not the same thing put into different packages as you may believe they are, they are not. Get yourself a separate sunscreen for your face and a separate one for your body, and then you can thank me later. Mistake number two is choosing the wrong primer for your aging skin. I'm gonna be honest, I don't always use a primer. If I'm using my Super Goop Glow Screen, that works as a primer for me, so I don't need an additional layer of product on my skin. That product already has light reflecting properties that smooth out the skin tone, it's already hydrating, it does the job, right? But if you don't have that, or your sunscreen is very sheer and basic, then a primer can be life-changing. It can be life-changing for the way that your makeup not only lasts, but looks. Primers, for those of you who don't know, they are used over your skincare, but under your makeup, and they're designed to make your skin look smoother by blurring out fine lines and wrinkles, minimizing pores, and extending your makeup wear time. For people over the age of 50, hydration and a lack of radiance in general typically becomes one of the biggest skincare issues faced. When we're looking for a primer, we wanna look for one that's going to add luminosity or hydration to the skin. One of the best primers that I've ever used is the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. This has been around like literally forever. I started doing makeup 17 years ago and this was the very first primer in my kit. I remember buying it and it really is still totally loved by the makeup community. It has like a gel-like consistency that's very smooth and lightweight, and it really does do a great job of blurring and softening everything out on the skin surface. Plus, it makes the foundation glide on like butter. It's beautiful, very easy primer to use on a regular basis. Another great one that I found for more mature skin is the Tula Skin Care Filter Primer. So this primer also smooths and evens up the look of skin while giving this glowy filter-like finish. I love how this product is non-comedogenic. It's very much, it really is very much a skincare product as well as a makeup product in one. And it's also great that it comes in these buildable tints that blur the skin out, much like a tinted moisturizer would. You can use it on its own or under makeup. It's great. What I recommend you stay away from in the primer department, again, is a product with the main goal being to mattify. Mattifying makeup primers like the Rimmel Stay Matte one are great for teenagers with excessive oil production, acne, really shiny skin, all of those issues. They can really kind of help to control that oil production in young hormonal skin, or they can flatten and blur out acne or texture in the skin. But when they're used on more mature skin, they can also flatten right? The radiance. And again, the second the skin becomes dull looking, it just instantly becomes older looking. When you're choosing this type of product, look for things that have the word glow, right? And if you don't like glow, at the very least, look for words like satin, 
right? Satin, glow, those are things that are really going to help bring that life back into the skin, make you look way more youthful and more refreshed and vibrant. Mistake number three is avoiding foundation altogether or choosing formulations that don't sit well on fine lines. You do not need to wear a heavy face foundation whatsoever. Honestly, I rarely even wear foundation anymore, but some product on your skin really can do a fantastic job of bringing warmth and vibrancy back to the face. I think that so many women are worried about the makeup creasing or looking crepey on the skin that they avoid it altogether. I also read all of your comments and I often see you ladies saying that you're afraid of looking like you're trying too hard. I read that comment all the time. I'm not sure why trying has become a negative thing. Please comment down below and tell me why so many of you have cognitively linked effort with negativity. I really do challenge you to unlink that. It's okay to wanna look nice. And if someone in your life is judging you for that or judges you for that, then quite frankly, that really is a problem that they have within themselves. It really has nothing to do with you. Effort is not a bad thing. Caring about how you look is not a bad thing. Putting effort into looking your best is not a bad thing. Trying is not a bad thing. Anyway, with that said, I do wanna share some foundations from my experience as a makeup artist that give mature skin a beautiful, beautiful finish. The first one is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Foundation. I've talked about this quite a bit on the channel. If you are a fan of the channel, then you've probably heard me talk about it before. This foundation is so luminous, radiant light, but it does have a decent amount of coverage. It's buildable, so you can use a very sheer wash of it, or you can stipple it on for a fuller effect. For a day-to-day -day foundation, I love it. I'm only 37 years old, and I wear it every day. It makes my skin look beautiful. I would say that it's almost an elevated version of a tinted moisturizer. It has a bit more coverage, but not too much, right? It's not too much that makes you feel uncomfortable on a daily basis. Now, if you want more coverage than L'Oreal or if you want longer lasting coverage, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation is phenomenal for mature skin. It looks like you have a filter on your face. It really does. It actually looks like you have a filter on your face. It's crazy. Every time I take a picture of one of my clients with it, they're like, did you put a filter on it? I'm like, no, I didn't. It's this foundation. It's amazing. It is a soft matte finish, but it's not drying or flat at all. It lasts for the whole entire day. It does not melt off in humidity or under any extreme weather conditions. It covers everything it needs to cover without being chalky. It's honestly amazing. I used it on one of my clients who is over 55. And when I finished her makeup, I took this photo of her in natural light. You can see how it looks like her skin literally has a filter on it. And this photo is not retouched. It's not retouched, isn't that crazy? It really is the perfect kind of event foundation for mature skin. Whereas the L'Oreal one is a great daily lighter coverage foundation. Now here's one that I would personally avoid at all costs. I cannot stand, I don't know if this is just me, but I really cannot stand the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation on mature skin. I have used it so many times with varying application techniques. I've never gotten it to look good for a long duration of time. Sometimes, depending on how I apply it, I can get it to look nice in the moment, but then within like an hour, it starts looking weird. It's so, I don't know what it is about this foundation. It also oxidizes like crazy, so it can get very dark over time. The face can all of a sudden start looking a lot darker than when you initially applied it. It is so annoying. It is such an expensive foundation that sits in the lines, that gets dark and weird. Like, I don't get it. I don't know how this is still in the market and why people buy it. I actually also found that the Dior Forever Undercover Foundation to be really unflattering on mature skin too. For whatever reason, I don't know, this foundation just sits in the fine lines like crazy, it creases. It's very drying. I don't know, it's very drying unless you have oily skin, but then if you have oily skin, it looks too wet. It's so weird. Just, I don't know, stay away from them. Stay away from any other foundation that is too drying in general. If you want, a full coverage satin finish. Estee Lauder double, double Wear will give you that and it will look great. You know, if you're older than the age of like, I don't know, 17. If you like this video and want me to do an entire series of this and not that, including skincare products, eye makeup products, hair products, the works, then let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. This video's over. <laughs>